A dinner party needs three things. Planning, preparation and timing. Plan the menu, i.e. what are you going to give your guests to eat. Prepare everything you need. Know when you need to start cooking the different parts of the meal. Preparation means knowing what ingredients you need and buying them. Also think about how you are going to serve the food. Will it be plated in the kitchen or served in dishes at the table for guests to help themselves? Or a bit of both? You need to know what serving dishes you are going to use and how you are going to keep the cooked food hot. I use a hostess tray but a warm oven will be okay as long as the temperature is below the cooking temperature. Also make sure you have serving dishes ready including sauce bolts or insulated jugs. Back in the 1970s, if you were invited to a dinner party at a friend's house or you had friends over to dinner at your house, it would usually be a three course meal. A starter, a main course and a dessert. The typical starter I have chosen from that era is a simple prawn cocktail, not a prawn salad. The ingredients you will need for four people are 300 grams of cooked peeled prawns, one lettuce, one lemon, Marie Rose sauce, which you can make very easily yourself and which will be demonstrated later in the video. The classic dessert I have chosen is Black Forest Gatto, which can be bought from a local store. It is cheaper and easier, saving time and effort. You will have enough to do without making desserts. One of the great classic dishes of the world was created by French master chef Antonin Karim and named after his great friend the Italian composer Giochino Rossini. I have seen many variations of this classic dish each one moving further and further away from the original. For the main course I have chosen my simpler and less expensive version of Tornado's Rossini. The ingredients for the main course for four people are half a pint of Espanole sauce which should be made in advance I will come to that later, half a pint of brown stock either homemade in advance or, for ease, bought from the supermarket. Two and a half ounces of unsalted butter plus another two ounces of unsalted butter and a tablespoon of olive oil. Four slices of thick white bread with the crusts removed to make croute. Four beef tornadoes shaped and tied, about 200 grams each. I am only cooking one steak for myself. Four fluid ounces Madeira wine or brown sherry or masala wine. The recipe calls for foie gras, but I don't like the way foie gras is produced. Also, it is very expensive and an acquired taste. So I use duck liver patty, which can be bought from supermarkets. So four slices of duck liver patty, each approximately 80 grams, 7 to 10 millimetres thick, salt and pepper to your taste. The recipe also calls for truffles, again very expensive and an acquired taste, so I use four large flat mushrooms instead. Give some thought to what you are going to serve with this quite a rich dish. A potato product, perhaps mashed or creamed potatoes, Croquet potatoes, potato matchsticks or French fries, but I am going to use baby new potatoes because they are in season right now. For four people you will need 16 to 24 depending on the size, about one and a half pounds. You will also need some sort of green vegetable like asparagus tips or runner green or French beans. I am going to use peas which are readily and universally available. To add colour to the dish I will also make Italian style stuffed tomatoes 
so I will also need 8 tomatoes, rounded, medium size, about 20 grams finely chopped flat leaf parsley leaves, the amount you use is up to individual taste, 2 cloves of garlic, about 80 grams of toasted breadcrumbs. You can buy this from the supermarket or make your own from stale bread. 60 milligrams extra virgin olive oil. Salt and black pepper for seasoning. But first we need to make the espinole sauce. This can be made the day before and kept in the fridge. Or if you freeze it you can keep it for a lot longer. To make half a pint of espagnole sauce, we need one carrot, diced, one onion, diced, two ounces unsmoked streaky bacon, chopped, one ounce unsalted butter, one ounce plain flour, three quarters of a pint of brown stock, two tablespoons of tomato puree and one bouquet garni. I've been asked what bouquet garni is. The explanation and how to make your own, if it's not available in your country, is written in the video description. Melt the butter in a heavy base pan. Add the vegetables. And the bacon. Cook over a low heat for 10 minutes or until light brown. Remove the pan from the heat and blend in the flour, making sure that all the flour is incorporated. Return to the heat and cook until browned. Gradually blend in half a pint of stock, stirring constantly until the mixture has cooked through and has thickened. Add the bouquet garni. Cover with the lid and simmer for 30 minutes. Add the remaining stock. And the tomato puree. Cover the pan and continue to cook for another 30 minutes, stirring frequently. When the sauce is ready, you should have a thick, brown, strong tasting sauce. 
Strain the sauce into a new pan through a sieve so that only the liquid passes through. On the day of the party, but before you get ready, take the espanol and brown sauces out of the fridge so they come to room temperature. Make your toasted breadcrumbs, if you haven't bought them ready made, and put them in a bowl. Prepare the vegetables. Wash the parsley under running water. Thoroughly dry using a kitchen towel. The drier the parsley is, the less it will stick to your knife. Remove the parsley leaves from the stalks. and leave it to dry out some more. Wash the tomatoes under running water and dry them. Cut the tops off the tomatoes. Over a bowl, hollow out each tomato using a small spoon with a sharp edge so that all the tomato contents fall into the bowl. Sprinkle each tomato inside with salt. This helps to extract the moisture. Turn the tomatoes upside down and leave them to drain for about 30 minutes. While the tomatoes are draining, take out all the hard part and leave the soft part, the juice and the seeds, in the bowl. You should have enough liquid for about half a glass of tomato juice. Wash the new potatoes under running water, scrubbing the surface of the skin with a brush. Leave them in a pan covered with cold water until you are ready to cook them. Remove the tornadoes from the fridge Trim and tie them neatly. Season them with salt and pepper and allow them to come to room temperature. They must be out at least two hours before cooking. Finally chop the parsley leaves. or pulse the parsley in a fruit processor until finely chopped, but be careful not to liquefy it. Add them to the bowl of breadcrumbs and stir. Chop the garlic, the thinner the better. I use a garlic press, add it to the bowl and stir.
add the 60 milliliters of olive oil and stir. Add the half glass of tomato liquid and stir. The mixture should not be too wet and still a bit crumbly. Now stuff the tomatoes, making sure they are well packed and leave to one side. Remove the mushroom stalks, if any, and peel the mushrooms. Set aside. Make the prawn cocktails and put them in the fridge. Prawn cocktail, together with the Mary Rose sauce, is a British dish invented in the 1960s. This recipe goes back to the retro roots of prawn cocktail, with an easy Marie Rose sauce, keeping it simple and tasty. To make the Marie Rose sauce, also known as prawn cocktail sauce or fish sauce, Add three measures of salad cream or mayonnaise to one measure of tomato ketchup. I'm using a dessert spoon here because I'm only going to make the one prawn cocktail. Mix it together. Make sure it's pink enough and taste it to make sure it's as you like it. Touch more tomato sauce I think. and it tastes better. Well, there you have it. Shred the lettuce. For an iceberg lettuce, cut it in half. Throw away the outer leaves and any that don't look quite good enough. Take out the core. And shred. With a large lettuce head like this you might want to consider dicing the lettuce so that uh, your guests can eat it comfortably with a teaspoon. Wash and dry the lettuce. I used to serve this dish in very large seashells. People used to say it tasted fishier. Such is the power of suggestion. But I gave the seashells away some years ago as I no longer entertain. So I'm reduced to using glass dishes, which is how it was originally served. Arrange the lettuce in the bottom of your serving glasses or bowls. Pile your prawns on top. And spoon the sauce over the prawns. Alternatively, you could put the prawns in the sauce. Mix them all up. 
so they're all coated. And then spoon the mixture over the lettuce. Garnish with a lemon wedge. Top and tail the lemon. Cut it in half. Then put two or three cuts in each half. Two cuts will make six, six wedges. Three will give you eight. Cut away the pith and get rid of the seeds. Make a small cut between the flesh and the skin so the wedge will sit up in the glass bowl. Eat it with a teaspoon and perhaps a small fork like a cake fork. Put the bowl on the plate so that guests have somewhere to discard the lemon peel and the cutlery when finished with. Serve with triangles of brown bread and butter, preferably in a dish or on a plate, not in the packet. Nowadays retro food is cool again, but keep it simple. Now get ready for your guests to arrive. Once you are ready and just before your guests arrive, make sure any appliance you are going to use is switched on. If the gatto is frozen, follow the maker's defrosting instructions. Place the potatoes in a large pot and just cover with salted water. Bring the potatoes to a boil Lower the temperature slightly and cook for about 15 minutes, depending on size. Preheat the grill to medium heat. Add a few drops of olive oil to each tomato and place the tomatoes on the grill. Cook them on medium heat for about 15 to 20 minutes until the top is browned. Make sure the potatoes stay covered with water. When the tomatoes are cooked, remove from the grill and keep warm. The potatoes are finished cooking when they can be easily pierced with a fork. When cooked, drain and put in a dish and keep warm. Mix two and a half ounces of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil in a frying pan and over a medium heat fry the bread until crisp and golden. Drain on crumpled paper and keep warm. Alternatively, you could toast the bread to make the dish less rich or if you have a dairy intolerance. Put this pan to one side. You could also use coconut oil for frying if you have a dairy intolerance. Pat the fillets dry with kitchen paper. This will aid caramelization. Melt two ounces of butter in a sauté pan over a high heat and fry the tornadoes on each side rapidly to seal the meat juices. 30 seconds each side should do it. Do not overcrowd the pan. If you do not have a big enough pan, then cook the steaks a few or even one at a time. This is to keep the pan temperature high. The more steaks in the pan will reduce the temperature. Cook the steaks the required time, turning regularly, until they are crusted on the outside, but slightly pink inside. Remove from the pan and set aside. Keep warm. Rest on a warm plate, 
not too hot to touch for at least five minutes. The fibres of the meat will reabsorb the free running juices resulting in a moist and tender finish to your steak. Using the same sauté pan, rapidly fry the slices of pâté until just caramelised. Remove, place on absorbent paper and keep warm. Still using the same pan, add the Madeira, Masala or brown sherry. Cook until the juices have reduced about two minutes. Stirring to scrape up all the residue in the pan. Blend in the beef stock and the prepared Espanola sauce. and leave to cook uncovered until it has thickened. Stirring occasionally. When the sauce has thickened, take off the heat and leave to one side. Meanwhile, heat a small pan of water with a teaspoon of sugar, add the peas, bring to the boil and simmer for about five minutes. In the other pan, which was used to fry the croots, lightly sauté the mushrooms, add more butter if necessary. Lift out and keep warm. Serve the first course. Presentation. Place a croot in the centre of each plate. Place a cooked tornado on the croot. Remember to remove the string. On top of each tornado, place a slice of pate. Place a mushroom on top of that, dark side up. Add two tomatoes to the plate. Other vegetables and the potatoes can be served in separate dishes. Reheat the sauce and stir. Pour the hot, thickened sauce into the serving container of your choice. Enjoy your meal.